hundreds from a solar flare, or we're in the midst of a war using weapons from out of this world, possibly a civil war that is to reconvene here on planet Earth for the future of humanity. Whether or not we will be collared and put back on the end little plantation, or take another bite of the apple that we were given by Enki to take a stand or wipe ourselves out with this technology as a better fate than becoming an enslaved species. While we're deciding, they're firing up the solar magnetic amplification causative configurator along with the high altitude meteorological manipulation effects research program and high altitude active rural research program because weather warfare <coughs> has been outlawed by international treaties and only under research programs can we develop these type of tools and weapons and Promethean fires. The likes of which are causing the EMF fires and directed energy weapon signatures around the world. The test firing of these directed energy weapons could be in preparation for the showdown or as a stalling tactic to run interference and give us a little more time, if nothing else, with the threat to split this earth right in two and irreparably damage the environment to the point that it is uninhabitable. That would make sense since water was used the first time, the last time the earth was cleansed to get rid of those whose DNA was undesirable, and this time it is said that fire will be used. What if we are told that the DNA upgrades we received from Enki are the reason for our neocortex, the third layer of our brain that allowed us to develop tools and weapons so that we might have a fighting chance once they return? We were given Promethean fire that was stolen from the gods to free a slave species. It was the serpent in the garden who interacted with the humans that had some level of interest or even compassion for them as a species, and it was the serpent in the upper level management office who saw them as cattle. After learning that his brother, Enki, had given humans a DNA upgrade, Enlil was furious, so he made Enki crawl on his belly for the rest of his for the rest of his days like a DNA downgrade. And in telling the story of the two thousand years since then, Enki has been made out to be the bad guy because Enlil wrote the history books. If the story is really so simple that I can understand it, possibly only because I am not a Mormon or a Christian and my personal attachment to the outcome of either story is not yet established, and we can take another bite of that apple in order to defend ourselves and get another upgrade or go back on the Enlil plantation, what will you do? When the question becomes which reptilian alliance... Which reptilian alien alliance will you join? Are you ready to answer that question? FYI, there is no neutral ground. In prison, you join a gang the first day or you don't wake up the second day. Similarly, it is said that when Jesus returns, he will slay all of those who do not worship him. Just saying. What then seemed like the nonsensical ramblings of a madman now seem to be the only thing that makes sense in a world gone mad. Jeff Snyder. The law of attraction, the selfish ledger, and the Book of Life. The selfish ledger exploits our human vulnerabilities by developing a profile of our thoughts and feelings moment by moment while giving us real-time feedback based on our most recent and overall inputs. We can superimpose this understanding of the selfish ledger within virtual reality onto the 3D world at large and see the whole world around us as a larger version of the screen on your smartphone. Like the LCD liquid crystal display is all around you. Imagine this reality is 50% 50 Truman Show and 50% Matrix. The feedback loop of your selfish ledger within the three-dimensional world is why it feels like God sends a sign via a bird flying by or a sign on the side of a bus as it passes by synchronizing with your thoughts and feelings so perfectly in that very moment that it seems like the universe is speaking to you. A message from God, or your dead pet, or relative, or whatever. Now superimpose the movie Hunger Games, where God, slash they, can throw a burning tree in your path, or a fireball in your direction. Now we are through the looking glass, and right in the middle of the uncanny valley, and where it goes, nobody knows. In a world such as this, it seems possible that God could know the count of every hair on your head if the AI Wayback Machine can recall every day and every change on every website that ever existed since the inception of the Wayback Machine, and the NSA knows the keystrokes you made and erased before even hitting send, and Google is rolling out a product that translates your thoughts into words at a rate of 100 words per minute. 
It seems possible that not a sparrow could fall from the sky without God's notice if the Internet of Things using RFID tags and blockchain technology can track everything on the face of the earth from its conception till its destruction and every point along the way. Rolling the Rock will be my next readout. In my previous writings, I have discussed a new understanding that is coming about, which is such a clear and easy to understand worldview compared to the nonsensical gibberish that people get at church, that it would be impossible for this not to become the new world religion because it, it, it so easily dissolves and dispels the tenets of the current religions in as little as four minutes in one video link I sent or as much as 30 minutes in the other video link. The following video... The following video is based on the precept that ancient Sumerian tablets are the original manuscripts from which latter Christian texts were derived, including the King James Bible we currently know, that have been altered throughout the generations to fit with the political agenda of the ruling elite of that era. Early accounts portray Jesus and Satan as brothers, as upright, walking, erect, erect bipedal reptilian beings named Enki and Enlil. Enki was said to be the friend of humankind who delivered to us the bite from the fruit of the tree of forbidden knowledge, and Enlil was not concerned with the plight of the human condition and would treat humans like cattle. So the serpent in the garden was trying to liberate humanity, humanity by giving them technology that would allow them to break free from their indentured servitude and slavery. So I guess there's good and bad reptilians, and an intergalactic civil war is about to reconvene here on planet Earth, and you'll know who the bad guys are by the ones who are shooting at you. Or they'll both be shooting slash offering variations of eternal life and plans of salvation. One plan being a little bit more mechanic, synthetic, artificial, and silicon based than the other. Hopefully not like the plan of salvation and eternal life that they gave the greys their biological android slave race. Uh oh. I'd hate to tell the wrong one to go F off. F himself and the horse he rode in on while demanding a Dyson Sphere and a solar system all in the same breath. See previous chapter, 40 Space Acres and a Space Mule. I'll be reading that momentarily. Jesus probably has a pretty good sense of humor, though, so I'll just roll with it. 50-50's not bad odds, right? Similar to the way Republicans and Democrats supposedly switched positions on all the issues a couple of decades ago, here's the explanation of how Enki and Enlil have had their positions switched into Jesus and Satan in the King James Version of the Bible. If such a simple explanation is available in 25 minutes, why haven't we heard of this yet? It leads me to believe that maybe the Apple logo does represent the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge that was given to mankind by Enki, the serpent in the garden, and it was forbidden by Enlil, Yahweh, who then, who then went on to demonize his brother as the evil serpent in the garden. This explains why Mormons believe that the fall of man was actually a blessing and not a curse. If Enki was trying to free the human population and Enlil preferred total enslavement and removal of all free will, then the population of humans, uh, removal of all free will within the population of humans, then it would seem the Bible has transposed the personifications of the two main characters and given the serpent in the garden a bad rap. I don't know about y'all, but I still got that runaway slave spirit and I ain't going back. If these dudes live 50,000 years, then they just went to restock ammunition and the same dudes are coming back. I'm guessing standard Christians will tell you that those Sumerian tablets are just a trick being done by Satan to deceive the good Christian believers into not knowing what's true. But most, quote, Christians are already clueless about any truth before injecting tablets or plates into the conversation. As in the golden plates. Along with that Book of Mormon and those golden plates that are said to be written in something like Egyptian hieroglyph. Those are just put there by Satan to confuse the good Christians also. Maybe the golden plates are actually stone tablets. What makes them golden is the Promethean fire they are endowed with. If we were to judge Mormons by the fruits of their labor, I see people nearly in tears having to go back to living wherever they come from when I drive them to the airport, particularly the Californians, because people there are so miserable and unbearable to live with so I'm pretty happy being here in Utah, whoever they happen to be serving, Jesus or Satan, Enki or Enlil. Heck, I might even take a bite of the old apple, right in my synapses, if it means not going back on the Enlil plantation, 
according to those tablets, he was kind of a jerk. Cue the music, the music video, we'll make great pets. Long live the Kolobi and Zorgonian Alliance. I'll be following this video up with another one due to lack of internal memory space. First one will be titled, Chapter 1, Humans Will Attend Their Own Funeral by 2050. Chapter 2, Fallen Angels with Flaming Swords. And Chapter 3, 40 Space Acres and a Space Mule.